Number 34, identify two common observations indicating some solids, such as dry ice and mothballs, have vapor pressures sufficient to sublime. Okay, so we're starting off with solids here. They gave us examples of dry ice and mothballs, and we want them to sublime. All right, well, what is sublimation? Well, on the list of phase changes, we have a solid, which goes to a liquid, which goes to a gas. Now, there's a total of six different phase changes in this world. Sublimation, which we're talking about in this example, sufficient to sublime. Sublime is coming from sublimation. And sublimation is the idea in which you can get a solid and go straight to a gas without the middleman. You can go from a solid to a gas in one shot. This is sublimation. Okay, so now, now we need evidence or we need two common observations to know that this actual idea exists. Well, one of them is coming right from the diagram that we see here, right? If we are observing a substance or a solid that is subliming, what are we not going to see? What phase are we not going to see? Yeah, you got it. We're not going to see the liquid phase. So that's one observation. We have to see that a solid, so for example, the dry ice is turning into a gas or a vapor, which is a gas, without melting, right? If we melt, then you will have liquid water, but we want the ice, the solid, to turn into the vapor, the gas, without melting. Now, you might have seen a presentation, maybe in elementary school, maybe in middle school, with dry ice, where they have a huge white styrofoam box with the dry ice inside, and then once you release the, the container, the ice is going to start making all these crazy kind of, you know, fumes, and it's like white smoke, and it looks really, really, really cool. So this would be one observation in which you see the dry ice and then all of a sudden those the white smoke, the white clouds start coming out. That's the gas. And when that process happened, there was no melting. There was no liquid being made. So that's basically one idea, right? Now, the second one is kind of iffy because some solids will have this when they sublime, but some will not. And the mothballs will have this characteristic when it sublimes. Now, if you've had mothballs in your house to basically, you know, not get holes in your shirts, right? You might have had a, a, a pick up a scent as to what they smell like. But Whenever you're talking about sublimation or even melting or anything that's basically ending up in a gas, the gas is what produces noxious fuels, or noxious, we'll say, fumes. Now, noxious fumes, noxious, S-A-T word, right? Noxious means like, ugh, like not good, smelly. So noxious is kind of like annoying, these are like smelly, smelly stuff. But that's what's going to happen with some of the solids. When a solid turns into a gas, since you're turning into a gas, some gases have smells. And chances are they're going to have terrible smells. They don't really smell pleasant. Uh, you could think of this by ammonia, the smell of ammonia. That's when it turns into the gaseous phase. Bleach, um, rotting eggs, the smell of eggs, um, you know, passing gas, that type of stuff. So the gas is always giving you those fumes. And this is when some of them 
would have that observation. So in essence, when the mothball sublimes, when the mothball sublimes, it will produce off a smell. It's kind of hard to explain that smell. Um, you, you would know if you, you did have mothballs growing up in like your closet, you would know that smell. Let me know if you did. <laughs> but anyway, these are your two common observations in which you have sufficient vapor pressures to sublime. Basically, you'll have a constant vapor pressure once you hit a phase change. And that's basically what the question was asking for. Just what are the observations that you know of in which something will go from a solid to a gas? And that's it. Okay. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And let's just keep studying hard. Keep working hard. I believe in you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll talk to you all later. Okay, bye-bye.